that we're going to talk about today, where do we give our money to? How can we be a blessing to other people? You know, we, we, we've talked about it, if we obey God's rules and laws, he will bless us. Well, let's assume we've, we've all been blessed, we've all got money in the account, we've got things we need, we don't want for anything. What do we do? Yeah, you know, do we hide our money, money under the bed? Yeah, we may have to do that soon. Because the bank's cutting out cash and checks and everything. Yeah, or, or do we um yeah, you know, do we put it in the bank or what do we do you know, with all the money that we've been blessed and goods that we've been blessed with? In Matthew six, nineteen, twenty one, you've got Bibles? Taking notes? I've got a lot of verses, but that's me. I, I like to preach from the Bible. It says, Do not lay for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So where's your, where's your treasure? Is it, is it under the bed, or is it giving to people? That's your treasure. We are laying treasures up in heaven when we give. When we bless other people, we're laying up treasures in heaven. Our motive should be to bless other people, to give glory to God, not ourselves. Our, our motivation should, should be love. In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3, I'll say these slow, but I should have written them out, but it says, 1 Corinthians 13, 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. So, you know, so we can give a lot of things. I, I know in, in some churches they, they really drag it out of you and, and you're really not giving in love. You know, you're giving. I, I, I heard a story the other day, this preacher was saying, hey, you know, Give and yeah, because I'm going broke, and he got people to give, and, and they added up the money, and that was a thousand dollars left to, to to meet the budget, and and, and he took the yeah you know, the offering up again. <laughs> this um, this is not good, but anyhow, there, there was one guy who said I was I was just you know sick of this guy talking and trying to get money out. I, I gave a thousand dollars, and he let us all out. That's not the way to give. We we give cheerfully. In Acts 10 it says, Cornelius, who was a centurion, Roman, he wasn't Jewish, was a devout man who feared God, who, who gave alms or money generously to people and prayed to God always. And the Lord said of him or to him in verse 4, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. The Amplified says, Your prayers and generous gifts to the poor have come up as a sacrifice to God and have been remembered by him. God doesn't forget what we do if we do it with a good heart. His faith pleased God. And that lines up with Hebrews 6, 11. 11, 6. Without faith, it is what? Hard to please God? Impossible. And Cornelius wasn't a Jew, but he feared God and he had faith in God and that pleased God. So God, God's blessings can't be bought in Acts 8. Simon, you heard about him, not Simon Peter, Simon tried to buy from the disciples some of the gifts of the Spirit. You know, they saw the disciples laying hands on people and they were speaking in tongues and they were falling over. And it, you know, he wanted that gift for himself so he could do it you know, for, his, you know, for his own own benefit. So he, and, and he tried to, he asked the disciples, you know, can I pay for this gift? We, we, can't, we can't buy God's blessings. It says in Acts 20, and I'll read this out of the Passion, giving brings a... Uh, sorry, giving brings a far greater blessing than receiving. So it's better to give than receive. That's what the Bible says. 
I enjoy giving. So where do we give? This is the question. Yeah, there are many worthy causes out there in the world, isn't there? There's people begging all the time on TV, give to this, give to this thing. In churches, there's always... But there's always people that want money. You know, when you go into you know Toowoomba, there's usually guys on the street there with their hand out, or or playing violins and guitars, and you throw money into there. I've I've done that. I've I've not played guitars, but I've thrown money in. You can bless them. But there's where do we give? If I gave to everyone that asked of me. I, I, I would have given away hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years. But, but you have to be discerning. You have to be discerning. Uh, like in, in you know, the floods in 2011, I did a lot of work down, down in the valley. Um, I, I took teams down there um, helping people. Uh, there was a bank guy in town gave me $20,000 to give to the people in need in one thousand dollar lots, and I, I did that with a team. It was, it was fantastic. But there was people coming up to you asking for it, and you knew that they weren't in need. They were just after a thousand dollars. So you got to be yeah. And I, um, we we worked with a person down at down at Murphy's Creek, and I said, "Give me the names of people that are really in need," and she did. But you have to be careful. There's people out there that try try and get money out of you. I know also in the floods that we we had our headquarters down at down at the pub at Murphy's Creek. They just opened the pub to us, and um, the, you know there was a lady in our church. That, you know they couldn't get reception down there all that time. They couldn't use their phones or anything. And there was a lady in our church that you know there was a ham operator, right? And she set things up for them down there, and we blessed them. But there was a there was a truck turned up one night just as about well closing. Uh, a truck from Victoria full of furniture. And, uh, uh, and you know, we didn't know, you know that he was coming. And, they, and you know, the guy said, where, where will I put this? And I said, well, just in the car park. So they got it all out, drove off. So there's all this beautiful furniture in the car park. We came back the next night, it was all gone. Wow. <laughs> people just come and took it. You know, we, you know, we had no control over it. But people are greedy. So we're going to be careful where we, where we put our money. So we need to pray about it and be led by the Holy Spirit. Remember, it, it, you know, if you give with a good heart, and 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 the receiver uses the money for other reasons, they are responsible for what they do, not what you do. You have given to someone with a good heart, and they use the money for themselves or whatever. You, you're not responsible for that. They're responsible for that. But, but but we need to pray, and yeah, we need to pray about where Lord, where you know, where will I give this money that I've got, or, or furniture, or whatever. So let's see what the Bible says about giving. You know, I'm going to talk about tithing. Now, tithing is in the Bible, and it means one tenth of your income or one tenth of what you've got. That's what the tithe means. Now you might say to me, "Oh, the tithe is in the law. That's all passed away now." Yes, it was in the law, but it was 490 years be before the law with Abraham. So tithing's always been in the Bible, right from the beginning with Abraham, right through the law. And I, I, I believe we're, you know, we're not under the law today, but the tithing is a principle. And, and, and I've always tithed, and God's always blessed me. So, so people say, oh, yeah, we're not under the tithe. No, no we're not under the law now. We're not under the tithe. But it's a good a good place to start, and I've tithed all my life, in good times and bad times, and uh, the Lord the Lord has blessed me. So, um, in the you know, you know the you know the Old Testament, the priest took the tithe. They actually took it off. It was like paying tax. If you didn't pay your tax, bad news. But today. The priest receives the tithe. God receives the tithe. We give it um, out of our own hearts. But, um, as I said, the tithe is a principle, and that, and and that uh, and that's where we should start. If you know, if we get an increase or a wage or something, the first thing we should do is give to God. 
Yes, we all have needs. We've got to pay taxes and bills come up all the time. But we sh- should always give to God first. Malachi 3, 8 and 10 says, Will a man rob God? You have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And he said, in tithes and offerings. You know, the people weren't tithing it and giving offerings. At that, This is in the Old Testament. So it says, they're bringing all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now, says the Lord. This is the, this is the only place in the Bible where the, the Lord says, try me, test me. And, I, and I've tested him. I'll tell you what it works. And try me now in this, says the Lord. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessings, that there will not be room enough to receive it. That sounds like our God, doesn't it? And, and you know, that applies to us today, I believe. If, you know, if we tithe, he's going to open the windows of heaven so we have more than enough for ourselves, but we have stuff left over to give to people. That's what it's about, being a blessing. God will bless us and we bless people. Now, that sounds like one of the blessings in Deuteronomy 28. It talks about the Lord will open up the treasures of heaven. He's talking about he's opening up the windows of heaven. Notice he will give us blessings more than we can receive. So that's another promise of God. Now the storehouse, it says, bring the tithes into the storehouse. Now what's a storehouse? It's a place where you get fed, or was in those days. It's where you store your, your thing. So, so your storehouse today is where you get fed. Where do you get fed today? You get fed in this church. You can say, oh, yeah, but I uh, you know, listen to people on TV and stuff. But you get fed in this church. And if you don't get fed in ch- this church, you can leave. Because you should. Every church should be feeding the people the word of God. And I guarantee you, we will feed you in this church. So that's where your tithe should go. You, you, know, you don't go to one church and pay your tithe to another church. Uh, you know, you know, it's like going to McDonald's and having a big fat meal and then going to KFC and paying the bill. That, that, that doesn't make sense, does it? You pay where you get fed. And as I said, I guarantee you get fed in this church. I, I, uh, I had a guy in you know, Toowoomba in my church and he tithed, but he, he, you know, he tithed to this guy on TV. He didn't give anything to the church. And I was talking to him, I said, I said what if you get you know, sick one night? You know, will you bring this guy in the States you know, to come and see you? No. And, and two weeks later, you know, he rang me in the middle of the night. You know, he lived down at Murphy Street. And he said, look, I, I need to go to the hospital. And I went down to his place in the middle of the night and I took him to hospital. And then he said to me after, he said, you're right. The time needs to go to the church. And he, he started paying his tithes to the church. So you pay your tithes into the store. That's where you get fed. Now that's... That's not your offering, that's different. We're going to talk about offerings in a minute, but you're tired. We need to pay God first, and that's, pay, that's paying God first. In Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, it says, Honour the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so that your barns will be filled. This is a promise, a blessing. Your barns will be filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. In other words, your needs will be met if you give first to God. So as you give, give today, just believe that God will supply all your needs and the windows of heaven will be open. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that your promises are yes and amen. Father, we thank you that, yes, that all our needs are met because we have given today, Lord, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour us our blessings that we can't use ourselves, but we can bless other people with it. In Jesus' name. Now, now the second thing we, we give is, is to believers. And I'll talk about this now. And, and you know, the following things that I'm going to mention are called offerings. They're not your tithe, they're above the tithe. Deuteronomy 15 verse 11 says, You shall open your hands wide to your brother. Now your brother is, is your fellow believer talking about born-again people, um, to, to your poor and your needy. 
So we need to take care of our, our brothers first and the poor, poor and the needy. Notice it says brothers first. In Galatians six ten it says, As we have as as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those of the household of faith. Our brothers. That's the household of faith. So we should be looking to bless people in our in our church, in other churches or whatever. I know at Christmas time last year we you know, we asked for people, you know, to send us names of poor people in the in the areas. And we, we we found three, and and I went to their houses. And they weren't and you know, they weren't members of our church, but we gave them gift vouchers, you know. And they thanked us. We haven't seen them since, but we did what the Lord said: go out and give. You know, we you know, we don't give so they can come to church. You know, we hope they come to church, but we don't do that. We give because we you know we love God first of all, and He told us to do it. You know, the Bible even says that if, if we have, have the means and don't help our brother in need, we don't have the love of God in us. That's pretty harsh, isn't it? That's 1 John three seventeen. It says, Whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Now, n- now the third type of people we give to are the poor and needy. It mentions in that verse, we need to give to the poor and needy. Now the, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about giving to the poor, Old Testament and New Testament. Jesus and his disciples gave to the poor. They had a treasury. They had a bag of money because they, they were blessed by people that supported their ministry, but they gave to the poor. And, and you find that at the... The, you know, the, the, you know, the Last Supper when um, um, Judas left the room, the disciples thought he was going to give to the poor because that was their habit to do that. In Deuteronomy 15.10, yeah, this is Old Testament, it says, You shall surely give to the poor and your heart should not be grieved when you give because, because for this thing the Lord will bless you. Now it's a blessing. If you give to the poor... Just because you, know, you love God and He told you, God will bless you in all the works and in all at which you put your hand to. And it says in that verse, the poor will never cease. You'll always have the poor. So we're always going to be giving to the poor. <laughs> I've noticed in the last few weeks, Paul, our friend here, he, he helps the poor. Yeah. He does. He, you know, he's got a heart to, to help people. I saw him the other day, he had a load of stuff on his, on his trailer and I said, where are you going? He said, I'm taking this lady's you know, stuff to go and bungee or somewhere. So bless you, brother, and the Lord will bless you because of what you're doing. I don't think, he's, I don't think he heard me. He didn't. So bless you, brother, for giving to the poor. In uh, Proverbs 19, verse 17, it says, He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and, he, and the Lord will pay back what he has given. So don't expect a hundredfold return on giving to the poor, but the Lord said he will repay you if you give to the poor. So th- th- there's another promise. You know, you know, there are blessings when we give to the poor, but there's also curses if we don't. Now this is you know, this is a verse will shock you. Proverbs twenty eight twenty seven. He who gives to the poor will, will not lack, but he who hides his ears will have many curses. That's pretty harsh, isn't it? Now if we you know that's saying yeah, you know, if we see the poor out there and we don't do anything, we're under a curse. I don't want to be under a curse, do you? Now, the, the fourth one is we, we should give to widows and orphans. And it says in James one twenty seven in the Passion, this is the Passion, true, spirit, true spirituality that is pure in the eyes of our Father God is to make 
a difference in the lives of orphans and widows in their trouble. That's a good verse, isn't it? We, we need to make a difference. And I'm not talking about our brethren, I'm talking about out in the world there. Yeah, we should take care of our brethren first, yes. Now, now this church, and, and Paul does as well, you know, supports a, um, an orphanage in India. How many kids in that now, do you know? 60 in one orphanage and 40 in the other. I've got 100 kids. Yeah. Education, food, accommodation. Well, we... 100 kids. We we support that because the Bible says we should. Orphans, you know, orphans haven't got parents. Or their their parents are throwing them out of home and, you know, they, they have no one to support them. So as a church, you know, that's one of our mission things is supporting orphans. So it's important that we do that. One, one Timothy five has a lot to say about helping you know the widows. In verse three, it says we should honour widows who are widows indeed. Now, what does that mean? Yeah, you know, you're either a widow or you're not. But it's talking about widows that have family, have, have their kids still alive. They should be helping their mum first. But there, you know, there might be widows that haven't got families and they're by themselves. They're, they're, they are, their husband's dead. They haven't got kids or the kids are estranged from them. That's when the church comes in. So, so we have to be careful not just to give to widows, but widows indeed. And if you read the Passion Version, it's really good. It talks about the, the, you know, the widow's kids should take care of her. It, um, if she's a true widow, but we will we will um, um, help widows. But if they have family, the family should be doing that, not the church. Now the fifth thing is that we should give to other to others that are preaching the gospel. We're talking about other churches, maybe evangelists, missionaries, Bible schools, etc. You know, we're not out there in, in, in the world at the moment. I, I believe we'll be training people to do that in the future. But we can support other people that are doing it. I know, you know, there's, uh, there's a Bible school in, um, in India. Samuel started that, hasn't he? But we, we support a Bible school in Papua New Guinea, you know, through Rama here. We, we support them. And, they, and they've started another one in New Guinea, will probably support that. It's training people to go out into the world and preach the gospel. You know, we can't do that because we're a small church, but we can support people to do that. In you know, Philippians 4, 15 and 19, and this is Paul speaking. <coughs> excuse, me, excuse me. Hallelujah. Paul is speaking in Philippians 4, 15 and 19. Now you Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. It was the only church that supported Paul at that time. For, for even in um, Thessalonica, you sent, you sent me aid. And um, not that I, I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. You, you, you know what that's saying? If we support an evangelist or a Bible school, all those souls that people have won because we've supported them go to our account. When we get to heaven, the Lord will say, oh, you're responsible for 5,000 souls being saved. And you think, oh, I didn't save. But through, you know, through evangelists, through ministries, missionaries, if we support them, we get the credit as well. So that's good to know, isn't it? That's what it says in the Bible, not me. So, so we need, yeah, we need to give. We, yeah, we need to give to God first through the tithe. We, we need to give to our fellow brethren in need. We, we need to give to the poor. We need to give to the widows and orphans, and we need to give those that are preaching the gospel to support them. And you know, a lot of those people overseas, they just rely on the you know, support of the churches back home because 
a lot of these current countries they haven't got any money to give. In India, there's a lot of poor, you know, there's rich people there, but they're normally Hindu or something. They're not going to support the ministry. But there's people back here that can do that. You know, we all have money. It doesn't matter how much. So the conclusion, as you can see, there are many blessings in giving. And that's what we're talking about this morning. God will bless us as we give so, so we can be a blessing. He, it, it says that he will pour out blessings that we can't contain if, if we pay our tithe. We will lack nothing if we give. That's a good one. We lack nothing. And that means lack nothing. Our barns will be full. Our vats will overflow. All the work you do with your hands will be blessed. Hallelujah. Now, in, in that verse in you know, Philippians 4, 15 and 19, it, it talks about the church giving. And then it says in verse 19, I think it is, God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. That's not talking to everybody. That's talking to people that give. So that, uh, you know, if you don't give and you all give, I'm not going to say this, but people just claim that verse, they don't give. It's not for them. It's for those that give and support the, you know, the ministry. And then you can claim that verse. My God will supply all my needs according to the what's in the bank. No, nah? according to his riches in glory. And it says that he's got treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. And the main reason that we are blessed, we give and obey God and you know, give to the poor and widows and orphans, is we are blessed to what? To be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your teaching today, Lord. Uh, I, you know, it's so exciting to give, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that, um, you know, that as we get blessed, Lord, that you'll bless us more and more because we're giving more and more. Father, that, you know, that you'll open up doors for us to know where to give our money at this time, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God of abundance. You have come to give us abundant life, Lord. Abundant means overflowing, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Thank you, Father, for that in Jesus' name. I just pray that you'll open more doors for us, Lord, to give to the poor, to give to those that are preaching the gospel out there, to give to missionaries, everyone, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we are a church that gives. We are a giving church. And I proclaim that right now in front of you people. That we are a giving church. My, my goal is each year, and we did it last year, is to give it a, a tithe of our offering, 10% of all our offering that comes in and more to, to these people we talked about today. So we, we do that. Um, it, um, if, you know, uh, if you know someone in our church that, you know, that's having a bad time, they mightn't say anything to me. But if you, you have no of someone that's having a bad time with finance, please let me know so we know and pray about it so we can bless them. Amen. May you be blessed this week and the blessings will come into you and the blessings will flow out of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.